I'm going to show five pieces, five video pieces, um, many of which have been excerpted, and then I will open up. I'll talk a little bit, and then I'll open it up for discussion. So the first piece I'm going to show is called Shoot Me, Strip 1 and 2. Um, there are two. Uh, the first one is about 5 minutes and 40 seconds, and the second one is about 6 minutes and 11 seconds. Just give her your um, That looks really delicious, but we're on night shot. How do you get it off night shots? This work addresses the idea of the glitch as a metaphor for the construction of identity and desire. The remote control and the media glitch, pixelation and breakdown of the image function both as alienation techniques in the Brechtian sense, breaking of the fourth wall, and by calling attention to the mediated relationship with as it relates to the contemporary use and production of video content posted to the web, and as that relates to social dialogue and social intercourse, reinforcement and reinterpretation of social norms and agency. Um, the body, the erotic and desire are, are things that are really important to the work that I'm coming into. I don't know that those things are necessarily visible in the five pieces I'm going to show. The shoot me pieces. Um, I think that's becoming more evident. Um, the other pieces address my interest in surveillance and voyeurism. Um, spectacle to some degree, but not, it's not the top of my list. Uh, necessarily with regard to what I address. Um, visual and social relationship between individuals and camera shapes have become codified so that different cameras like surveillance cameras, camcorder, camera phone, still camera, webcam, etc. all kind of evoke different things from people. Though I've noticed that there's this increasing antagonism toward camcorders, even though it's totally reasonable just to bust out your iPhone and see video taken. So, in um, the next piece I'll show is called. No, it's not. The next piece I'll show is called Plein Air, Plein Air Life Going. Um, it's a performance piece and it's about depiction. It's about people depicting my body in charcoal on paper and about art as sanctioning the otherwise taboo of the video of making so, part of what I'm interested in is prisoners. Um, bringing art into a world desexualizes nakedness and it makes me less subject to attack. Um, I was utilizing the space of this performance to uh, recreate and perform a gender, gender, design, 
Performed body. They're both performing for an academic institution that sanctions their nakedness, um, but taken out of the context of an art space, this nakedness becomes conspicuous, and then that conspicuousness in the public landscape. calls to attention, the social structure of gender. Um, you like there is something else as well. Translating the body through charcoal as opposed to recording the body. Which speaks back to surveillance and voyeurism and embodiment and disembodiment and how the hold is a lot about propriety. Um, social propriety, sexuality, touch, public display, vulnerability, and social code, and I guess expressing desire, around the rest of expressing desire, the conditions of asking. And I guess because Expressing desire is my artwork is informed by my confounded relationship and feeble ongoing attempts to communicate with humans. My body always says things I don't mean for it to say. My vocal inflections are erratic and bizarre and misrepresent my meaning. People do not know me. People who do not know me well regularly misunderstand me. This experience defines my perception of myself as an outsider, most comfortable in the social periphery. It is from this position that I am always trying to figure out the code. Communicate my value to the group. The code they all appear to be flawed, which 
These aren't necessarily things like sucking one's finger that would necessarily cause or a great pleasure in the person who's acting it out. I guess it becomes a different thing. It becomes about the pleasure of the person watching. Which I think in my piece called Thesis, which I didn't bring because it's still very really complicated. I have something like that going on as well, where the act of giving fellatio to an inanimate object is about the pleasure of the person watching. In a way, this can be about the oral pleasure of taking this thing into their mouth, but I think mostly its design is about pleasure of the watcher. Um, that one's also about the phallus as the ultimate, the ultimate seat of desire and sexual power. Um, so, the experience I'm having with this review is something that there's uncertainty, there's something I'm supposed to say that it would be. The certainty about the goal is there, and the expectations and the codes of conduct are variable. They're unknowable. It's a performance, and I'm trying to figure out how to behave.
the master of this situation so that we turn the camera onto ourselves and perform and act out in this way. We stage the self that we think is appropriate. into shoot me strip one two um, the other thing that is really interesting about this work that I found is I tend to put everything on the internet that I make and based on my nakedness in this these videos I can't post them so I could put up things naked on Vimeo, but because of their size restrictions and uh, all that, I would have to pay whatever. I would have to pay money to post my videos on Vimeo. So I've been talking around. interested in pornography and... And then do you, is it recording now? Yeah. Oh, look. Queer porn. Can I take a rest of this? Yeah. No, are you sure? Some yeah. people to produce so, taco queer porn. Taco, and they told me there were sites burrito, where, you can, where I can put up my videos and I can make 40% of whatever it costs every time somebody looks at the video. So say somebody goes online and they want to look at my video, they pay a fee for the hosting site, or for the hosting company, whatever. They pay a fee and then I get 40% of the fee. So it kind of curiously introduces art as a commodity and the body of the artist as a commodity. Um, it brings in the idea of pornography as a sufficiently accentuated and that it would actually be a very uh, extremely creative element to the written um, words are no longer capable uh, really? of transmitting the thoughts and the concepts which we but have concerning the world. It's funny because they say as a video artist, uh -huh. as a digital video artist, that I'm actually making objects and one of the most important not making objects means that I don't. I don't get to be able to group shows. So I came to a study to look at what those people are doing. Yeah. 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 Let me explain a little bit. Or maybe I just haven't found that place. But yeah, it requires a bit of a matter of time. It presents to be challenges. It is not supposed to describe it by words. So I also joke that 
my art's not sensible. I don't see them like objects and art markets or things that say. And video is just free. Go on the internet. And this video can probably not even see it. I do my child, you know. Which is the of numbers as many of them see it. So, because they can't respond to it, then I'll be able to see it. You have to post it online and then nobody wants to buy it. So, there's that whole interesting commodity aspect of video art. And you can control it with the circular video that you see in the video gallery. You can't post it online. You can go out to buy them in a DVD. And similarly, porn, that's my name. She called me Cal Mister. That's me, Sean. Does she work for you? She's not on the list. She's not on the list. She's not on the list. If I put it on the site, there's a list. So, okay, is it that? Is it that? Touch. 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 Touch.
Adrian, you just played for 58 minutes and 43 seconds. What are you going to do now? <laughs> I'm going to drink some water. <laughs> 